One of the biggest challenges that we have as type 1 diabetics is building muscle. And the reason why is because if you have out of control blood sugar or even if you have, you know, slight hyperglycemias, you're not in range all the time, then building muscle can actually be very challenging because it messes with certain biological processes like protein synthesis. I can't actually say the word synthesis, but when we have hyperglycemia or even in some cases hypoglycemia, building muscle can be a real challenge as a type 1 diabetic. In this video, we're going to talk briefly about uh, the challenges of being a type 1 diabetic and working out and what we can do to build muscle and avoid certain issues when it comes to uh, our blood sugars and how that hinders our ability to build muscle. So first of all, building muscle is a challenge for even a normal person, let alone a type 1 diabetic. Uh, muscle building requires you to go and basically tear up the muscle fibers within your muscles. When this happens, usually it's you know lifting heavier weights uh, or even using our body weights in exercises like push-ups or sit-ups or pull-ups. When we exercise and we you know tear up our muscle fibers, essentially what happens is your body goes into a process where it has to rebuild those muscles and they happen to rebuild the muscle bigger than it was last time because it's trying to strengthen that muscle so that the next time it goes into the gym, it won't tear as easily as it did the first time. So in reality, working out and building muscle is literally just tearing down your muscle over and over and over again to make it stronger through the rebuilding process. This requires significant amounts of energy. So you continue to burn calories after a strength training session because your body's working harder to rebuild those muscles. So you use more calories for up to two to three days after the workout. So in itself, Working out helps a diabetic manage their glucose because more glucose is being used to build that muscle. Also to build muscle, you need to eat uh, a certain amount of calories. So you can either be in a calorie deficit will allow you to become leaner and overall keep you, you know, in a, in a, in a strength gaining position. However, you might not build as much muscle compared to a bulk, which is where you eat a calorie surplus. B but that's all for another video. Today we're going to talk about diabetes and building muscle. So when you have roughly, you know, above range blood sugars, that's enough to actually hinder muscle growth. For the longest time, I couldn't build any muscle, not that I was doing the right thing in the gym or go, even going to the gym in the first place. But for a long time as a diabetic, I, I could not build muscle because I suffered from a high A1C, so I was above 8%. Nowadays, I'm at 6.2% and I've been able to build muscle. I know I'm not impressive or anything like that, but you, you get what I'm saying. Like I, I now have been able to build a stronger body, have a better physique, et cetera, because I've gotten my blood sugar under control. Part of that is because I started working out properly, but two, I got nutrition aligned. I, I started using a system that I actually teach in my coaching program. You can go to my website down in the link below, type1diabetescoaching.com, which is basically where you know I take you through a whole entire fitness plan, calories, etc., one-on-one -on -one coaching for about three months. But the problem is, is that when our sugars are high, it messes with our ability to conduct protein synthesis. That's basically a process where proteins will assist our blood cells and rebuild our, our muscles and strengthen them to be stronger. With hyperglycemia, basically the biological process in your body becomes hindered because your insulin cells are not working together with your blood cells to allow nutrition to, to flow freely, for glucose to for, fl flow freely. So essentially, you have a bunch of glucose in the blood that can't be used as energy because it hasn't been un allowed into its blood cells. When this happens, you're essentially in a state of undernutrition you're, you're not getting enough nourishment for your body to operate properly. And the last thing on your body's mind is to start building muscle. So you just, you don't get any real gain at all. In my experience, when I became diabetic, I didn't know I was diabetic for about two months. So I had lost like 27 pounds, incredibly thirsty, incredibly hungry, cramps, muscle cramps all the time. I basically went from, you know, a, a slightly overweight kid to, to a very, very skinny and and malnourished looking child. That's the same thing. When, when you have hyperglycemia, you know, that, that's basically what happens. Your, your ability to keep your body up to date and nourished 
and okay is completely gone and your ability to build muscle is just you know not even there furthermore when we have you you know hypoglycemia hyperglycemia our ability to focus our mental energy doesn't translate very well so when we go to the gym we might not be in it you know and and, and i it's kind of cliche to say but when you go to the gym you gotta be in the right mental mindset it's like getting your head in the game like if you're not good to go in the gym, you're probably not gonna be able to lift your heavier sets. You're probably not going to be able to hit your personal record. So it's best to stay in line overall so that you know if your blood glucose is always good, then you're going to live like you're a normal human. Now, the challenge is how do we get normal blood sugar? I talk about it in my coaching program, basically, what we have to do is we have to get our nutrition line, number one, and then we have to build a fitness plan that really does support that nutrition plan. And, and you know, some people, they're, they're not interested in building muscle, so they won't, they won't go, you know, for, you know, heavier sets or whatever, but you want to be strategic with what you're eating in general. So you need to adopt a healthy nutrition plan. This does not mean go completely low carb. In order to lift heavy, you have to eat carbs. I'm not for keto. I'm not for any of those, you know, extremely low carb diets. You can get away with a higher carb diet as a type one diabetic if and only if you manage your blood sugars really well through nu nutrition. But in my experience, you have to support it with a, a viable fitness plan. Because the fitness plan, once again, I, my philosophy is very rooted in strength training. You burn calories, therefore glucose, after working out up to 36 to 72 hours. That is exceptionally helpful as a diabetic because your blood glucose will naturally be lower than what it normally would be. And you can eat carbs. Like for instance, I eat for dinner. So I fast in the morning. I fast for about three to four hours, maybe sometimes five. After I wake up, I'll drink just, you know, coffee. I do drink half and half creamer in my coffee. So that's about 40 calories. So some people will say I'm not really fasting, but generally 50 calories breaks your fast. So if I'm at 40, I'm not breaking my fast, but I'll drink, you know, a protein shake to, to break my, my fast. Or if I'm on going to the gym that day, I'll eat a banana before my workout. That banana is 27 carbs. I'll eat it before my workout. My sugar will be about 105, 100. And I'll come back from the gym and my sugar is 130, 125. And many of you would think, oh, well, you, if you get a banana, I mean, bananas are known to like spike type one diabetics blood sugar. I mean, I, that's generally what happens. Well, no, if you go to the gym and you burn those calories, then you're burning the glucose that you just ate from the banana. You get home, you drink your protein shake, you can continue to, to fast until dinner, you eat a big dinner. My dinners are normally like 70 to 100, 120 carbs. Now you might think that's insane. Well, I'll let you know, the way I manage my insulin, manage my glucose, I'll eat a 70, 120 carb dinner, I'll dose effectively for it and Two to three hours later, I'll be at like 105. I'll start at 105, end at 105. And I attribute that to my nutrition, to my fitness. And with those two things together, you can build significant amounts of muscle. So with all that being said, uh, building muscle with diabetes is very challenging. And a lot of diabetics are confused about what is actually stopping them. It's your blood sugar. And it's plain and simple, it's your blood sugar. Uh, and in another video, we're gonna talk about managing our blood sugar for a workout, et cetera. That's for another time. But as of right now, what you need to know is that your blood sugar needs to be managed properly in order to start building muscle if that's what you want to do. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to like, subscribe. We're gonna have a bunch of new content coming out. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comment section below, or you can go to my website and contact me on the contact page however you want to do it. Uh, I usually respond within 24 hours if you do email me. Other than that, this is the first video of this channel. So we're going to see, you know, what kind of interest we're gauging and uh, if we can build somewhat of a community here. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to be here and, you know, see you soon.